Good evening, everyone. My name is George Saranicolo. I'd like to welcome you uh, to the final briefings of the Capstone Workshop in Integrative Sustainability Management, which is an important uh, course uh, in the MS in Sustainability Management program. I coordinate this course because it usually has several sections each semester. And as part of that job, I get to host these final briefings. For the benefit of our guests, uh, let me just say a few words about the course and then tell you about what we will do exactly tonight. The course is meant to have students synthesize and apply their knowledge in a real world sustainability setting. So rather than ask these graduate students to do a thesis, we ask them to do the work for which they've been preparing. So students organize in teams of eight to 10 students, and they work for a client in government or the not-for-profit sector doing a semester-long project under the advisement of a faculty member. This course reflects the practical nature of the sustainability management program. We want to graduate students who are going to go out into the world and do this work rather than think deep thoughts about it. And so the, the course gets them started in that way. And there are good and bad things about that experience. Uh, students experience um, what it's like to work alongside sustainability managers, and that experience is both positive and negative. It has great rewards uh, in analyzing data, in formulating solutions to really complex problems, but it's also a uh, difficult experience because sustainability managers work with small budgets, lack of information, political pressures, organizational pressures, and that's exactly the point. We want students to learn about these things and to figure out creative, innovative solutions to these difficulties. So tonight you will hear five instances of this kind of experience where student teams took on really difficult problems for clients both in the region and, and far away and you will hear how they've tried to make sense of them uh, using their knowledge of sustainability, of general and financial management, quantitative analysis, economics, public policy. And um, their solutions will often be extremely helpful to the organizations for which they develop them, but often they will also be incomplete, and that's also part of this work. They'll be incomplete because time ran out, because there isn't enough money or enough resources or enough information. So be listening for both the rewards and the difficulties of this work, and continue to learn whether you're a student or uh, a guest here tonight. Let me also tell you that uh, in addition to everyone in the room, we are also sharing this experience via live stream uh, to prospective students and other guests. So for that reason, I'd like to ask you to speak directly into the mic. And if you have a question after each presentation, to wait for the mic to come to you. Otherwise, the people online will not be able to hear you. So this is how we will run the evening. I will uh, ask each presenter to come up, make a 10-minute presentation. We'll take a few minutes of questions after each of those presentations. Then we'll take a break. Uh, you're welcome to go back and continue uh, enjoying the refreshments. Uh, those of you who are on live stream, the sound will go uh, mute during that break. I will then uh, call back, the, call up the next presenter, and we will do that 
uh, five times. So, with all of that, let's begin with a presentation on incinerators uh, and the city of Detroit. Please welcome Bo Barb to uh, the stage. Hi everyone, my name is Bo Barbie. On behalf of my lovely team, I'm happy to present our capstone work, uh, reducing local pollution from a uh, local incinerator in Detroit. Now this case uh, takes a special place in my heart because I uh, lived in severe air pollution while working in Beijing for four years. Now before I go any further, I would like to extend a thank you to our capstone advisor, Kizzy, for all of her support this semester. So first we're gonna go over overview of our client and Detroit's challenges, followed by a methodology uh, and uh, recommendations that will just kind of show you what we've done uh, here over the semester. Now, our, uh, <clears throat> our client is Bloomberg Associates. Last year, with uh, the mayor, Michael Dugan, out of Detroit, they helped set up the first uh, Mayor's Office of Sustainability. Now, Detroit is facing many sustainability issues. However, they're particularly concerned about a local, large, out of compliance incinerator in their backyard. Now, Bloomberg Associates has asked us to look at the associated pollution streams with this incinerator. Now, there are three pollution streams that we were asked to look at. Air pollution from the incinerator, air pollution from trucking, from diesel garbage trucks going to the incinerator, and the foul stench of odor coming from the incinerator. Now, the types of pollutants coming from the incinerator, incinerator and the diesel trucks are none too friendly. They've been cited to cause uh, asthma, uh, different types of cancer, and other health-related issues. And the odor emanating from the incinerator definitely uh, uh, impacts the quality of life of those residents. There have been reports of them not being able to open their windows during a hot summer day or invite their family and friends over for a summer barbecue because of the absolutely terrible foul stench in their neighborhood. To give you a neighborhood context of the pollution streams, you can see here that the incinerator is located in a densely populated urban area with 21,000 residents. 70% of those are low income. Now this neighborhood also has 13 schools one just a stone's throw away, highlighted by the star, to the incinerator. Now the children in this neighborhood are three times as likely to be hospitalized for asthma than other Detroiters. These facts highlight an environmental injustice issue facing this neighborhood. Now, there should be remediation of this environmental injustice issue especially from the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, which is the direct regulatory authority over this incinerator and the associated pollution streams. They have fined and given violations to the current operators, a private company named Detroit Renewable Power. However, those fines and violations have not motivated the current operators to get their incinerator into compliance. The city of Detroit is not, does not have any authority over this incinerator. No regulatory authority whatsoever. So, Bloomberg Associates asked us to look at cases with other cities that have incinerators from around the world and develop recommendations and tools to help them help Detroit reduce these three pollution streams. Now, considering that Detroit does not have regulatory authority over this incinerator and the pollution streams, we had to go and find different methods to have Detroit implement our uh, found recommendations. So there are two types of contracts. One contract between the city and the incinerator to move all of Detroit's municipal solid waste to the incinerator, and that's due for renegotiation in 2021. Also, there is a contract between the city and the local private waste haulers 
uh, and they're due for renegotiation re uh, this year. Now, for our methodology, we used three approaches, research uh, from primary and secondary sources, screening, and ranking. We use these uh, approaches to build and develop three unique pollution stream methodologies, starting with the, the incinerator pollution methodology. Now, we started with over 2,000 cases from around the world, and we're able to filter those down to 20 based on uh, case factor characteristics similar to Detroit, such as the age of the incinerator, um, the, uh, also the, the amount of waste processed at the incinerator, and as well as uh, where the incinerator is located, whether it's uh, located in a densely populated area. Now, getting these 20 uh, cases, we then ranked them based on pollution uh, ratios. And then we moved on to forming our incinerator odor methodology. Now, <clears throat> we tried several different approaches before we came, before we came to uh, creating a frequency analysis of 30 cases. Uh, and we're able to qualify our rankings of these cases with expert interviews. For example, we interviewed the plant manager of Dublin, Ireland's uh, massive plant there, and he was very helpful. Next, we have our trucking pollution. Here, after doing some primary research, we were able to find 40 cases and then uh, screen and filter them to get to our best cases that drove our trucking recommendations. Now, once again, these methodologies helped us get to our goals and recommendations of our project. We have three pollution reduction goals uh, based on the pollution streams, and then an overarching engage the community goal, which helps facilitate these other three goals. And then we have our uh, recommendations. They fall into three buckets, starting with the technology bu uh, bucket, and then we have six operational uh, recommendations, such as installing a, a centralized complaint hotline for odors. And then we have three engage the community uh, recommendations, such as setting up a community advisory board, similar to the one at the uh, West Harlem um, waste management plant down the street. Now, <clears throat> each recommendation has at least one initiative that helps drive the recommendation towards its goal. Here you can see five technology retrofit uh, initiatives uh, here to reduce incinerator emissions. Now we have 13 recommendations and 23 initiatives. Today I will discuss only two of these initiatives today, which are technology based and have case, cases that show significant reductions in the pollution streams. So, According to the latest MDEQ uh, inspection of the incinerator, the incinerator's technology is out of compliance. Now, faulty technology can possibly explain why the incinerator has uh, exceeded air pollution limits over 700 times in the past four years. Now, for at least one type of pollution, we suggest that the Detroit incinerator install uh, updated filters called back houses seen here. Back houses are essentially, uh, they essentially capture uh, burned trash dust and, pre and prevent it from leaving this, uh, this, the incinerator. Now, a New Jersey, Essex County uh, facility called Coventa were able to reduce their emissions by 47%, a significant reduction in this terrible uh, air pollutant by installing several of these bag houses. Next, uh, diesel trucks. There are retrofit technology to reduce their air emissions. However, diesel trucks cannot be retrofitted to emit zero uh, air pollutants. So we recommend the city to go out and uh, access federal funding under the Diesel Emissions Reduction Act and replace one of their older, older diesel garbage trucks with a fully electric garbage, trucks, garbage truck. Now, we saw this happen in several cities like Sacramento, where they were able to access funding and replace their old diesel 
garbage trucks with updated uh, elect fully electric garbage trucks. Now the great thing about these garbage trucks is that they not only save the uh, city money, but they also reduce noise pollution in the, on their routes and they essentially have zero tailpipe pollution. So today we are going to deliver, we have delivered 13 recommendations and 23 uh, initiatives to our client. And we're also delivering a case management uh, data table that will help Bloomberg Associates help Detroit uh, manage these three pollution streams. Now, we would also like to address uh, further steps that Detroit can take, such as looking at uh, strategic initiatives to, uh, with MDEQ to get the main regulatory body over this incinerator to remediate their out of compliance status. Now, in conclusion, this project is a starting point for our client to help a community that is suffering from environmental injustice. The community, as you see here, will not be silent. As we know, all of us want clean air and fresh air for our kids. Thank you. Okay, questions for Bo? There's a question in the front. Please wait for the mic. Uh, I'm just wondering if there's been any class action lawsuits against the incinerator by the residents of Detroit, and, you know, um, yeah, that's my main question. There are two ongoing uh, consent judgments from MDEQ to, uh, that have established fines going towards uh, the facility for missing updated um, emission tests and compliance tests. Uh, but there's no class action lawsuit from the citizens themselves. Other questions? Hi, I'm just wondering, other than um, air pollution, did you look at or consider greenhouse gas emissions from the trucks or from the incinerator itself? So uh, the city is primarily concerned with the health of their citizens with regards to the incinerator. So we looked primarily at criteria air pollutants uh, from trucks and the incinerator. Sorry, so just the city itself wasn't interested in the, looking? The, the mayor's office of sustainability mm -hmm. asked Bloomberg Associates to define our project scope mm -hmm. as just the air pollutants. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Bo. Nice job. Thank you very much.